Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan, and we've got a market that is correlated with the traditional markets. And the traditional markets right now are doing very poorly. So you see this same price action occurring in the crypto market. So there are some, I think, good uh, points of entry right now. But if you're looking for a chart that's going to the right and up, well, there's not a whole lot of projects doing that right now. Um, there's four, and the reason why they're bucking the trend, while well, GMT is up 5%, it's an app, and it's often called Steppen. It's a Solana project. It's interesting because it's a move to earn, meaning if you are uh, using the app and exercising, you are earning tokens. <laughs> Nexo also up 15%, probably because they got listed on Binance. Quant up 8%. I think that's due to a new exchange listing as well. And XDC up 16%. Most definitely, we know that that is because they just got listed on Uphold. And uh, yeah, I'm going to share with you just a little bit of information that I did earlier today on that. If you'd like to get the highlights from that announcement, uh, it's in a video that I put together in a short short, so it's just less than two minutes long, and it was uploaded before this one. This is an important detail about Uphold. They have different tiers for their coins, and so if you have a tier three coin on this exchange, you're able to buy, sell, hold, deposit, withdraw and send all functionality but if you have a, a particular token um, that is a tier four you are allowed to just buy hold sell and send so you can't withdraw it if you need to get out of that then you need to turn it into something that is a tier three to move it out in another uh, you know swapped into something else and so just be aware of that because there is quite a long list of tier four tokens. And yes, XDC right now it falls into the tier four category. And Panama is also finding the value in XDC. They are trying to provide legal stability for crypto assets for payments. And they put together a list, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Elrond, XLM, IOTA and XDC. They were specifically named. So you can see that as this market matures, more and more of the top tier coins are being identified outside of just Bitcoin, which I think is a very good thing. Just before I was going out to dinner last night, I saw the tweet that was put out by CoinMarketCap and it talked about uh, XRP being an imposter meaning that it wasn't a real cryptocurrency because it was not decentralized. And uh, what did it say? Oh, the tweet was just unbelievably bad. It, uh, it, it was actually a two-part tweet. It, they first said that um, uh, you had to guess uh, among a lot of different projects which one was an imposter. So they gave you the choice of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Litecoin, XRP, Monero, Chainlink, MakerDAO, or NEO. And then of just, you know, hours later came the answer. And it said that uh, the answer was XRP for being controlled and governed by authorities, hence defeating the purpose of cryptocurrency. All the other coins are decentralized and are basically people's crypto. Well, wow. The truth is, is that the XRP ledger and the native token that secures it, XRP, is decentralized. Now, I gave this person the benefit of the doubt and said, you know, uh, maybe possibly the SNS manager is new, mixing up the company Ripple, which is definitely centralized. Uh, but, you know, it's just that Ripple chooses to use the digital asset XRP in their on-demand liquidity solution to bridge those cross-border remittances. But XRP is used in lots and lots of 
other projects that have nothing to do with Ripple. And, and they are really separate and two entities and the XRP ledger is decentralized. And I said, you know, I, I, I just couldn't believe that, that CZ would let this go because his investment arm of Binance actually acquired CoinMarketCap. And I know that CZ can't see every bit of communication that goes out on every company he has, but I really wanted to bring it to his attention. So I tweeted out to him that, you know, this was very, very bad if this person has a personal agenda and was not just, you know, confused. Um, and this particular story that, that covered it cut my tweet off, but actually I brought to the attention that he had once uh, brought a suit against Forbes for spreading mistruths. And so I know he understands how terrible it is when uh, media, uh, people who have a large audience, put out wrong information. I mean, it's just really bad for the space. And I, I just couldn't believe it. Well, I was really lucky to see that uh, CZ saw my tweet and responded that he asked and it was a mistake by a new joiner. So apparently this was a new employee. I don't, you know, we, we don't know that for sure, but all his managers uh, know this now also, and it shouldn't happen again. Sorry about that. As platforms, we should remain neutral to the extent possible. Well, yeah, definitely. And this is, this is, I know that coin market cap has, has been, uh, in the past and still currently, um, doing very bad things for the digital asset XRP and, and even, even still now has a description in the you know, in the, in the, in the, uh, um, informational kind of educational part of the website, which is just, it's just terrible. It spreads more FUD. And so somebody there really, really has it out for the, uh, digital asset XRP. It's obvious CZ's really got to clean it all up, but, um, at least we, we saw that he was able to, uh, get that tweet deleted. And um, I really think that coin market cap owes the market, the uh, whole ecosystem, an apology. I mean, a really big time apology. And so I doubt we'll see it. But if you really want to get some good coverage, uh, my friend uh, Moon Lambo did a fantastic video on covering kind of all the different communication that was being said. So if you really are wanting to get down into the nitty gritty and the details of of what was occurring on Twitter after this tweet went out. Uh, he did a fantastic job covering it, so you can find his video. And if you're a member of the XRP community, you probably are familiar with Ryan Salkis. He is no fan of Ripple, but I found something very surprising today. It was a comment in his Masari report on the uh, state of crypto for 2022. It's been out for a couple of months, but I just didn't have time to read it. It's 160 some pages long. And on page 67, he's talking about XRP. And I just, <laughs> just couldn't believe that he wrote that, especially because unlike many other crypto tokens, XRP has actually been legitimately used for cross-border payments as a bona fide currency. <laughs> Coming from Ryan, that is an amazing statement. Let me just show you this report because it actually is quite good. They're covering the trends, people, companies, projects to watch across the crypto landscape with some predictions for 2022. Uh, I, I do think it's worth a read and I give it two thumbs up. I know how hard it is to put this kind of research together. And uh, this particular report is very good. Tomorrow morning, I get up very early and at eight o'clock, I'm going to join a Twitter space 
with the 3D apes. And uh, yeah, I look forward to that. It's, it'll be, I think, a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot I have to learn still when it comes to the NFTs on the XRP ledger. So I think it's going to be a great learning opportunity. I'm going to let Hugo of Flare Networks take you out at the final portion of this video. He had a two hour plus community meetup where they really do a deep dive into what Flare Networks is going to bring in terms of their ecosystem and their capabilities. And I'm telling you, they have built something really, really important and quite amazing. So just so much to talk about in that video. You can find it pinned to the Flare Network's Twitter feed. Uh, but I did just pull out some of the highlights. And uh, gosh, what can I say? There is just, they are making world changing technology here. So do enjoy. Take care. Sayonara for now. Bye bye. So when we launch the F assets, you'll be able to mint and use on Flare. FBTC, FXLP, FALGO, FDOGE, FLTC, FXLM, and I think I said F Filecoin. And the uses of that will be DeFi, crowdfunding, which I'll come on to in a second, and payments. And again, I'll make the point you'll be able to use Bitcoin for payments cheaply and quickly. And that's really quite fun. It's about $17 billion locked in bridges. And so we call that the $17 billion problem. But we think that'll be way more over time as there's chains are just proliferating and proliferating. Subnets, supernets, all the various types of different blockchains. And as people search for performance, as applications come online, which are much more consumer focused rather than retail, they're much more consumer focused rather than DeFi focused, there's going to need to be much more highly performant blockchains. So we don't expect the proliferation of blockchains to stop anytime soon. You can bridge between any connected chain. So from Flare to Ethereum, from Ethereum to Solana, Solana to Cosmos. You can do it with insurance, speed, and decentralization. You can use assets from connected chains on Flare. And most importantly, you can build dApps on Flare that can use any of the tokens from any of the connected chains with information from each connected chain and or from information from any connected system. And that's why we say deploy once, serve many.